Hi everyone, welcome to week one of Introduction to Tools of the Trade. So this class, as you've heard from Professor Horton, just kind of gives you the opportunity to learn more about professional tools and tools used in the industry that classes may not teach you about. And one that we thought was really important is LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is a professional social networking site that allows people to connect with others all over the world to help them promote uh, advance their career. So basically what you'll see here is you have you, okay? And everyone you're connected with, think of it as like a Facebook friend request, is your first connection. These are typically people you worked with. So just like, you know, you may follow your middle school friends on Instagram, LinkedIn is that, but for career development. So you'll find that as your network grows, you'll find different posts, different messages, different opportunities from people who are your second connection or even your third. And so these opportunities can range from referrals, interviews, to even possible jobs. So first let's go over how to set up your LinkedIn. So if you already have your LinkedIn like your LinkedIn account, that's great, but we're gonna go through a few basics that we wanna really make sure that you flesh out. So first, of course, is your name, profile picture, and headline. So right off the bat, when someone sees your LinkedIn, this is the first thing they're gonna see. So when I talk about that, this name right here, Mara Hart, that's my name. This is my profile right here, and this is my headline right here. So for your name, it's pretty simple. Whatever, whatever name you use in the classroom, put that down as your name um, in LinkedIn. For a profile picture, you wanna make sure you use a photo of your face. If you use a group shot, then they don't know who you are. If you use a full body, they can't see you clearly. So having a profile picture really helps your profile stand out as not just someone on the internet, but an actual human being. And then a headline is going to be a succinct description of your current role. So whenever you post or connect with people on LinkedIn, they'll see this tag, this headline. This is typically used for you to say like your job position at a company um, or what you're like interested in or um, even like your formal former positions, like a past internship. So kind of go over like a couple examples. Um, let's go over first the needs improvement. So we have a group photo right here, which is off the bat. You don't know who Betty in the situation is. Is Betty the one on the left, the one on the right, or the six people in between? You don't know. Um, as for the name, it's Betty Jam Maker Smith. We don't need to know that she makes jam. That doesn't need to be in her name you may have a really cute nickname that you've had since like ninth grade, but LinkedIn isn't necessarily the place for it. You wanna make sure that you really put a professional face out there. And then we'll see that the headline says, student at the University of Virginia. That's really okay, but that shows that you haven't really branched out of just taking classes. A big thing about college is, trying to get the extracurriculars that you can and make those connections. So when you put down student at the University of Virginia, you're showing you go to class, you go home, and that's it. So now let's check out the good. So we'll see the profile here is just a photo of Evan's face. It's, you know, it's a close up of his face. It's not bad, you kind of see everything clearly. The only reason I say it's good and not great is because his face is more in the dark. Um, you want to make sure everything's just kind of evenly lit. So his name is Evan Blackberry. That's a pretty, pretty normal name. And he says that he's a treasurer at Computing Club. So this shows that he takes leadership and extracurriculars. That's great. And then pretty much the only difference between Evan and Karen and the good and great here is that Karen's profile picture is very brightly lit, evenly lit, so that way you can see everything clearly. One thing is if you're unsure where you can get a headshot like this is a lot of, um, there's a lot of different opportunities that I found personally on my college campus where um, every semester or so they'll 
uh, photographers will either charge no fee or perhaps like five dollars to for a headshot so you'll just go to a central location where business is higher and get your photo taken if you have a friend who like has a nice quality camera um, or even nowadays honestly a high phone works great too okay. next up is education so all of you guys are college students, so all you guys have something to put down here. Keep in mind that your LinkedIn profile will be looked at by recruiters. So you want recruiters to know that you are a college student and you're looking for an internship if you're not yet to graduate or a new grad job. So right here, you just put down your university. Um, if you look on the right, I have two universities because I studied abroad, uh, but the main one is the University of Virginia. I've included my university name, my degree, which is Bachelor of Science Computer Science, my expected graduation date, uh, which is fall 2021, and then also some relevant classwork. Keep in mind that if you, ha if you have an example of um, You've taken physics two. You don't necessarily need to put down that you've taken physics one. It's kind of assumed. And then you also want to make sure that the classes you put here are relevant to your job. So sure, you may have taken underwater basket weaving as a fun elective, but unless you feel that it gives you some benefit in the recruiter's eyes, you don't necessarily need to list that. Um, like I said, if you studied abroad, this is where you can put down whatever courses you've taken there. And then also if you've gone through any educational programs, like, um, like I can't think of one at the moment, but perhaps like something like a boot camp or maybe a summer class program, things like that. Okay. And now moving on to the third thing, experience. So I think the hardest thing about college experience, uh, college kids experience is that not everything is the work experience that you expect. I know that I came into college and I worked at Home Depot as a cashier. And for me, I was like, how does that matter? Why can I put on that on my LinkedIn resume? Yeah. But you have to think, you have to think that it doesn't necessarily have to be quote unquote work experience. These companies aren't gonna check whether or not you got paid for this work. But the important thing is that you have the experience. So if you've held an extra, like if you held a leadership role in your extracurricular or done research at your school, that can also be experience. So the most important thing here is having a company name. They wanna know who you worked for having a job title, having your time in the role, and your job consistent, uh, sorry, job description. Um, so right here is my company name. It's University of Virginia. The job title is CS1501 Teaching Assistant. My time and role, I started this job August 2020, and now I'm doing it till present. And then job description is something that really matters here. So one thing is you wanna keep it consistent. So if you notice, I have two sentences right here that start with a verb. So taught and held. So if you look at my, the rest of my LinkedIn, I actually have that description format for all of my roles. Because if you find yourself switching back and forth between formatting, that's gonna catch the eye of the recruiter rather than that crucial information in there. And an important thing of this is you want to quantify and describe. So let's look at some different examples. So our first one is taught students tools of the trade. This needs improvement because I don't know how many students I taught. I like what even is tools of the trade. It's very bare bones and rushed. From an average eye, this can be like they could imagine that I'm teaching two people, um, maybe GitHub, and that's it. They don't know exactly what that means. So the next we'll move on to describing what um, tools of the trade is. So I taught students professional development and tools regularly, regularly used in the industry. So now the recruiter doesn't need to like guess what tools of the trade is. They know because I've just described it there. 
Now, great would be top 40 plus students professional development and tools regularly used in the industry that is otherwise not taught in schools. So now that I've kind of um, described it, my last one, I made sure to add a quantifier. So a lot of times when you're writing a resume, if you have any relevant data, put that into your description. Did you boost efficiency by a certain percent? Did you teach a certain number of students? Did you teach at a, cer a certain number of weeks? Things like that. So for some of you who may not have relevance yes experience, what you'll see here is that honestly, any job can really be, um, really be geared towards a certain position. So we'll see here, I said, um, I said that I'm a summer counselor. So a summer counselor taught children's crafts. So what you'll see is the importance of that is that you're able to communicate clearly and concisely to help others complete a task. Great leadership experience, and it shows that you're a team player. So the way I would write that on my, uh, on my resume is manage 10 plus campers and engage them with hands-on activities to increase creativity and motor skills. So I think this is a very classic example of how to make your resume work for you. Um, Sabrina will be talking more about how to write the description, but also if you ever feel kind of confused and you're not sure, um, feel free to look online for any resume reviews, um, see if your college's career center has peer reviews. And I know that every semester or two, my college will will have events where they have industry professionals come in and you can sit down with them for about 15 minutes and get your resume looked at. And then if you were a server, you waited tables during rush hour. This shows that you can effectively juggle multiple tasks in a way to ensure customer satisfaction and maximize research, uh, resources. So my description would be ensured customer satisfaction by quickly relaying information between customer to cook. So then honestly, Resume writing, you honestly need to put it towards what you want to do, but these are a couple examples on how you can make these seemingly out of, uh, out of high school jobs um, seem more relevant to the career you want to go to in the future.